Hello and welcome to John Can Fix Anything. Today I'm going to show you how to replace your fuel injectors on a 2007 Mazda CX-9. This is the 3.5 liter V6. It also works the same for the 3.7 liter and also for some of the Ford Fusion models and some of the Ford Edge models. So if you want to know how to put this into your Mazda CX-9, then stay tuned. Before I get started, I want to talk just a little bit about safety. And the first thing I want, to, want you to be aware of is, is that these fuel injectors are under a high pressure system. Okay, Almost all of your fuel injected systems are under pressure. So when you start working on these injectors, that fuel and that fuel line is going to be under pressure. So I'm going to go through the process of uh, removing that pressure so that you can pull these out safely. But that being said, a good pair of safety glasses is an absolute for this particular project. You do not want to get sprayed in the eye with a with a gasoline. So make sure you got yourself a good, a good pair of safety glasses. Uh, I use rubber gloves when I'm doing this kind of project. Uh, you can use any type you want to, but I recommend safety equipment, PPE. Because when you start messing with these little things and they're under pressure, it can be a dangerous situation. And also make sure you are not smoking or doing anything around that fuel system that could cause a fire. So let's get going on the project. As far as tools go for this project, uh, pretty standard. Uh, you're going to need some um, close-in, box-in, or open-in wrenches. You're going to need um, your regular uh, Phillips flat tip screwdrivers, a good socket set with a couple of extensions. But there's really no specialty tools for this, but you are going to have to take the air plenum off. You're going to have to take the um, air hose off the throttle body. So there are some things you're going to do, but most of them are going to be done with uh, box-in wrenches or good socket set. I used a very small quarter inch uh, set for most all these. And then when I put the uh, plenum back on, I actually did put that back on and used a torque wrench. I think it's 115 uh, inch pounds for that. So just standard wrenches, nothing special, nothing you have to go to the uh, uh, auto parts store for and borrow. Uh, I think you'll be able to do most of these with the um, out of toolbox wrenches. So let's get started. All right, so I'm going to show you how to do an injector change on this. Uh, this is a 2007 Mazda CX-9. It's a 3.5 liter. It's a 3.7 from 2008 to 2015. It's exactly the same engine. They just did a little displacement change. But basically, everything's interchangeable on these engines. So what you're going to need to do first is go to your gas cap and take your gas cap loose. You've got a pressurized system here that you're going to have to deal with, and you're going to have to take that pressure off that system. So the first thing you do is go ahead and go in there and take the uh, uh, gas cap off. Then the second thing we're going to do is we're going to come over to, let me turn this over here. I'm going to come right over here to this fuse box. Take that cover off that fuse box, and if you re if you look at this fuse box, on the inside of this fuse box, it's going to tell you all the fuses here. And what we're looking for is we're looking for the uh, fuel injection, and the fuel pump is a 30 amp fuse, and it's the second one over. It's the larger blue fuse, so that's a 30 amp blue. I'm going to take the camera off and show you this 30 amp. And what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to crank the engine dry and I like to use a pair of little pair of needle nose pliers so I'm going to grab those real quick. Come over here. Okay so you see right here that's that's the 30 amp fuse for your fuel injection. And just come in here and grab it by the side. Twist it back and forth a little bit. And it should come out. And I'm trying to do it without breaking it. Just took the top of it off. Okay. 
pain in the butt. I'm probably going to replace that now. There we go. Okay, so I got that 30 amp fuse out of there. You can look inside there and see that it's it's not blown, but I'll probably replace it anyway. Okay, so got that out of there. Got your gas cap off. Now go ahead and go inside, crank your engine until the engine fails. Okay, and that'll get all of the pressure off that line and then I'll show you where the pressure valve is and we'll check it and make sure the pressure's off. And then we'll go ahead and start taking everything apart. So I'm gonna go ahead and bleed this real quick and I'll be right back. Okay, after you're done, uh, just cranking that engine over a little bit, getting that pressure off, you come right in on the top of the engine, right where your bar is for your injector bar. You'll see this little, it looks just like an air um, on your tire, okay? Just take a flat tip screwdriver or whatever and press that down. Make sure there's no pressure on it. There may be a little excess uh, gasoline maybe, I don't know, just you know, make have a little rag there or whatever. Press that down, make sure you got all the pressure off of it, okay? Once you got the pressure off of that, then that means that rail, that fuel rail is, is, is depressurized. Now you can go ahead and take everything apart. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take off the, uh, the air hose um, back and get ready to get to the throttle body because we've got to take this air plenum off. Uh, the air plenum has one, two, three, four, five, six bolts on it. There's a hose in the back. I've got a couple other videos that show you exactly how to do it. There's a hose and a connector right here in the back, right back here, right there. There's also right in here, there's a bolt right back there. There's a bolt in underneath the throttle body, which I'll show you when I get all this covers off. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these off real quick and then I'll be right back. Okay, once you get this off, this is off the back of the uh, the uh, air hose. This just pulls right out. And this, this goes on the other side of the air hose and it's just a thumb clip right there. And there's a thumb clip down here. This has got to come off anyway, because you're gonna, well, I guess you could leave it on if you wanted to, but I usually do it, take it off to make more room. Get that out of the way. Okay, so now you gotta get this ready to go. There's a, there's a bolt underneath this throttle body right here, and there's a bolt back in the back back there. I'll show it to you real quick. You got a long extension, yeah, that'll get it. You just take it right in here, right back behind there, and there's, it's right in underneath. You can barely see it, okay? Then there's one right in underneath the throttle body right here. So make sure you get those. You need to disconnect this clip right here on the throttle body. It's a push in and pop that off. Then I usually go ahead and take these two screws loose right here on this, this uh, vacuum. I don't know what type of vacuum system it is, but I always just take this screw off and there's a screw off right behind it. I take those two screws off and move this off to the side and it gives you a lot more room to pull that plenum off because that, that plenum's got to kind of come through this area right here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a wrench and do that real quick. Just take that. You can actually just work it right up here. It'll twist, get that out of the way. That'll give you room to get this out when it gets loose. And this is the way we're going. We're going to this rail right here. So now you got six bolts, two here, three, four, five, six. Uh, 
and they're, uh, I believe they're 10 millimeter. I'll tell you in a second. I think they're 10 millimeters. No, they're eight millimeter. And these are uh, 79 to 101 inch pounds. So remember that when you're torquing them back up. And, you, and I've never gotten to the 101. Mine, I usually use about 90 to 93 pounds and that's about all. You will need a new set of gaskets for this plenum. You don't want to reuse those old gaskets. You can, but I don't recommend it. Gaskets are cheap. I uh, think they run, I want to remember 15 bucks a set. And this is what the set looks like right there. I get them off of Amazon, MS19557 is the Ford number. It's made by Molly. So get those, then get you a set of new injectors, wherever you want to get those injectors from. If you need a new set, make sure they got both the old rings on them. You'll definitely need that. You need six of them. If you haven't done your spark plugs, you might as well do them while you're in here because you're going to have this plenum off. So get you a set of spark plugs, put them in while you're at it because you're going to be, that back side's going to be accessible and uh, normally it will never be. You'll only have access to these front three. So you need to change your spark plugs. Now it's going to be a good time to do that. The center uh, bolt here, this is a long bolt. The only long bolt out of the group right there. The others are short. Okay, I got all those off now. They're all the same, except for the one long one. Okay, now here's the tricky part and I'll show as best I can this back area back here. Right there where my finger is, hard for you to see it, there is a hose there and it goes down into this cover right here. Okay, then you can pull that hose up. Uh, it doesn't have anything on the end of it on the other end, so you can pull that hose straight up. Then once you pull that hose up, Right underneath that, you're just going to have to feel for it. There's an actual electric connector right underneath that. It's very simple to get off. All you have to do is press it on each side and pull it off. That connector has to be off before you pull the plenum. And I'll show it to you once uh, I get the plenum off and you can kind of see how, what it looks like and how it goes. But I mean, the first time I did this, I had no idea and couldn't get anything off. And I'm like, what the heck's going on? Found out the hard way. So, you know, just, uh, so you don't have to. Pull the hose off. Get this connector off here. This plenum will come off straight back, just like this. Okay, now you got access to your fuel rail. And uh, show you that back part. These are the uh, rings you're going to change out. This is that back hose right here. And right underneath it, that's the connector. 
and then you'll see the connector and the hose that's where they belong right there so there's your intake for the engine and this rail is what we're after and that's what we're gonna we're gonna pop this off right here we've already taken the pressure off and then we're gonna take this whole rail off then that gives us access to the injectors okay so that's what we're gonna do and you can put you know if you if you're worried about something getting in you can just go ahead and stuff each one of these if you want um, I think it's a pretty good idea to do that that only costs you six shop towels and then you don't have to worry about anything getting in there okay the fuel rail is a got four bolts on it and I'll show you a couple of them Okay, you're gonna have to take this loose right here because that's that runs that's the fuel to the fuel rail. If you look down here, you'll see there's four bolts. There's one, two, three, one hit in there, there's four. Okay, so you gotta take those four bolts loose to get to your injectors. I'm gonna go ahead and take those loose. Okay, here's the uh, fuel rail taken out. This is exactly the way it's in, just like that. Okay, now the best way to do it is to go ahead and take the end off like I showed you. Just pull that end off. It's a pressure, it's pressurized. Then just get up over the engine and one side at a time, just actually take your hands and grab this rail by this, this end and pull straight up. Because <coughs> you see how these are angled? They're angled to go into the cylinders. Okay, so when you pull them, you just pull them straight up. Okay, don't try to go left or right because they're not going to pull out easy. Okay, and when I pulled mine out, you can see one, two, three of the red um, O-rings stayed in. So I'm going to have to dig those three O-rings out and uh, make sure that everything is nice and clean. I use a vacuum cleaner and I clean everything out with a vacuum cleaner so I don't get anything down into the, into the cylinders. Okay. But that's what the rail looks like. And then each one of these run with a clip and I'll show you how to take those clips off. And then we'll, we'll put the new ones on and then I'll show you how to put them back in. Okay, I got the fuel rail sitting on the bench. And of course you got six injectors and I got my new set of injectors. So what I did is I pulled one off and I just wanted to compare it, make sure that I've got the right new ones and this is a the new one of course there's the old one but I do have the right ones so that's good okay so what you want to do is I do mine one at a time and so what you have is you have six injectors and each injector has a uh, an injector mount and you have a clip for each, in each injector okay the blue um, o-ring goes down into the injector like this okay and, and it, it's you know you have to seat them in they're they're fairly difficult then once once they go in they have a clip and this clip rides right in on the top of that injector there's little grooves in this injector okay that clip rides right into those grooves like that just like that and then the bottom part of it locks down on this ridge of the actual uh, tube Okay, and that's what holds the injector in place, just like that. Okay, and on these injectors, the clip goes from right to left on the back side. This is the back, this is the front. Okay, these clips go in from the right to the left. Then on the front, they go in from left to right. Okay, like that. So, and I generally do this one at a time so I don't get confused because I'm easily confused. Pull this out. Okay, so what I do is I take just a little bit of all purpose grease, I mean that much, just a small amount, and I go around that o ring just enough to make it nice and pliable. Okay, and then you just need to insert steady pressure see and that will slide right in just like that okay 
and you take your clip and that clip goes right on the, on that groove and then it holds between that and the and the piping it help if I get and get this right here and I'm trying to show you how to make sure you see how this works there's a, these grooves are right there and they're right on top of that that metal ridge okay and this rides right over the top of it okay so when you put this on you may have to come up just a little bit because that injector clip has to fit right on that groove just like that see how that went into that groove and see on the top part that groove's got to be it's got to be seated just right just like that okay if you don't get this seated in here right you're going to put that back in there and it's going to get under pressure and it's going to blow that off okay so this has to be seated properly just like that okay so i'm going to go ahead and do all six of these and i'll be back all right, I've got the injectors installed. And again, I just took a little bit of this and I lubed each one of these injectors. And I did it on the red to get it ready to go back into the rail. Okay, just a little bit, just enough to know that it's there. Okay, I'm gonna caution you one more time on these clips. You make sure that that clip is seated in the plastic and it goes underneath that metal rim on each one of those clips because if you blew it, you're gonna know it as soon as you put uh, pressure on this clip. If you got any questions about one, take it out and redo it. Okay, so now it's ready to go. This is the way it's gonna be installed. I'm gonna go ahead and get everything back into position and then we're gonna work this rail back in. Okay, so I've got my rail ready, setting here ready to go. Show you how I did a little bit of my prep work here. I cleaned everything out in these holes, and then I took um, shop towel and a little bit of um, brake cleaner, and then I went ahead and wiped these. Just cleaned the holes out as best I could. And I mean, there's still some of these that look pretty you know, they're not perfect, okay? But clean them as best you can and try to keep as much debris out of the cylinder heads as you can. Don't, don't get anything down into those cylinder heads, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and position the... I'm gonna go ahead and position the fuel rail over it. Slide it in underneath the electrical, okay? And just get a good feel for where it where it belongs just nice and slow make sure none of your connectors are in the way okay and remember you've got a little flexibility on these to move them around you can slide them in and out now the best thing to do is line up one side I always pop in the back first so I pop in the back side first then then you got plenty of room to work on the front Okay, so that's what I do. So just work that rail in, even pressure. Like that. Okay. And then you can come over. Some guys put um, a bolt on the back side and then push push in. I don't necessarily like to do that. I like to do them together until I feel them go in. All right. And you'll see that the holes will kind of line up on the, see that one came back out. I went too far in the back. So I'm gonna slide this back in. Pull this one back up just a little bit. So I can slide these back in. Just like that. 
Okay, now my holes even lined up on my rails. And that's when you know you're about right. Uh, that all looks real good. All my holes are lined up. This one didn't go in right here. There we go. Now it's lined up. Okay. And just give them a little twist. Now I've got them all lined up. Take my four bolts. I don't remember if I showed you these bolts or not, but I will right now. These are the four bolts. Um, they're all the same size. They go back in and hold your U back on. And remember the torque on this, 72 to 101 foot-pound. And again, I usually, I'm usually in about the 90s on the foot-pounds. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my uh, torque wrench, set it. I'm gonna go ahead and torque these down. Okay, so I got that torque down. Once I do that, I go ahead, plug back my, my injectors back in. I still leave my stuff in there to protect the cylinders until I'm until I'm completely done. Make sure you get these in. Make sure you hear them lock. You should hear a little little click. All right. So now what I'm going to do? I'm going to slide my rail back on my tube back on the rail. Just like that. Make sure it goes over that hook. And then I'm gonna slide it back in. Okay, once you get that clip back in, pull on that, make sure that that hose is secured on there. Okay, because that's, that's gonna be under pressure again once you start the, uh, uh, the fuel pump, okay? So everything is installed, everything's been torqued down. Now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put my new uh, seals on this, on the plenum, and then I'm gonna pull the rags and mount it back. So I'll be back. Okay, here's a shot of the new um, O-rings installed in the plenum. There's little notches on each one. These are three, one, two, three. It looks like six, but there's actually three of them. Okay, and they fit around and they've got notches three notches. Make sure you get those notches all lined up and you get it seated properly. Okay, and that's what it looks like. And we're ready to go ahead and put it back on. Make sure you take out all of the paper towels. Don't forget, you got a tube and then you've got a connector. You need to put the con hook the connector up first and make sure you feel it lock in with your hand, then put the tube back into the, the back cover. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll be back. Okay, I've got everything mounted back. Don't forget the hose and the connector. Put the connector on first, then the hose. Then there's a support bolt in the back. There's a support bolt underneath the throttle body. Make sure you clip the throttle body 
clip back on until it clicks. Then put this back over. There's two nuts that go on that. Now I'm ready to go ahead and put the uh, air assembly back on. So I'll go ahead, get this put on real quick, and then we'll be ready to test fire this back up. So I'll be back in a few minutes. I uh, put everything back together and fired the vehicle up and there wasn't any real issues with it. So I didn't think it needed any additional video. But I really appreciate you watching the video and I would even more appreciate it if you would go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We'd really like to get a thousand subscribers this year. So thanks a lot for watching and have a very great day.